you would agree with me that wide leg pants, palazzo pants, are here to stay a very long time. Naya John over here. Hi guys, and you are welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a perfect wide leg pants. How to draft, how to cut, how to sew. This is so easy. You all know me. I come on here to show you the easiest way to achieve a neatly sewn dress. Now, if this seems like what you're interested in, please stay through to the end of this video. Do well to subscribe and do well to like this video. Let me see you in the comment section when you you're done your with this video. You need your waist circumference, your crotch depth, your knee length, and the full trouser length. You also need about one and a half yard of fabric if you're a size 12 and below. And you need about two years if you're 14 and above. Yeah. So the first thing you need to do while cutting this trouser, bring your pattern paper, draw your waistline. Now from that waistline, you're going to go in by 11 inches. That 11 inches is like a standard crotch depth for any high waist trouser. Okay. So I've marked that 11 inches. I'll come right there on that 11 inches and I'm going to go in by two and a half inch this is because the person i'm sewing for is a size 12 so i'll go in by two and a half inch yeah and then i'll connect it to the edge of my paper like you just saw on the screen once i've done that two inches i'm going to connect it back to my waistline that black line you see at the very beginning of my paper is my waist line now i'm going to use my ruler and simply connect from that crotch depth that crotch depth all the way to my waist line there now the next thing to do is to get your hip line to get your hip line is very simple you place your tape on that waist line that line we have at the beginning of our paper place your tape right there like you see on the screen and go in by about nine inches okay go in by nine inches and that will be your hip line so i've gone in you're going to highlight that nine inches and that will be your hip line now we'll move to the knee line how do you get your knee line you're going to measure from your waist all the way to your knee the distance from your waist to your knee that's your knee length and that's what we use as our knee line mine is 23 and i've gone to mark it mind you i'm making this dress for someone please when i say mine i mean my client okay so that's 23 will be my knee line now i'll go ahead and rule across those lines that i highlighted my hip line and then my knee line if you notice this paper is not enough to get my full length because the full length of the trouser is about 48 inches i'm going to extend the paper so that my trouser length will be complete when you're done creating the lines it is now time to label the lines the first line is your waistline the second line is your hip line the third line is your knee line and then we'll complete the paper to give us the full length okay we'll start marking the circumferences of all the areas this means that we're going to mark all the round measurement we'll start with the waist circumference the waist circumference of my muse is 38 i'll divide 38 by 4 please take note divide 38 by 4 and that will give me about 9.5 then i'll add half inch that half inch is for sewing allowance and i'll go direct and mark what i have okay so that will mean 9.5 plus half inch that's 10 and i'll mark 10 right there now i'll move to my hip line please take note of where i'm placing my tape okay for the waist and the hip i place my tape on that line that i drew first that crotch depth that's why i place my tape for the waist and the hip now for the hip measurement her hip is 48 i'll divide 48 by what four and that'll give me 12 then i'll add half inch to 12 and i'll mark 12.5 now the dots we have on the hip line and the waistline we're simply going to connect those dots yes like you see on the screen after that we'll move straight to our knee line on that knee line go towards the edge of your line 
place your tape like you see on the screen place your tape and go in by 1.5 inches 1.5 inches once you have done that highlight that 1.5 inches after you have highlighted it connect it to your crotch depth line just follow what you see on the screen is very clear connect it to your crotch depth line after you've connected it to that crotch depth line you go ahead and extend from that same 1.5 inch extend it all the way to the length of your trouser it is very simple now you go to under that crotch line that's where we are going to be marking the measurements we get for our upper tie you know your upper tie that part of your tie that is very close to your hip you measure around about that place so after you measure around it whatever you have you're going to divide by two not four please take notes you divide by two so now your upper tie circumference divided by two the one for my client is 30 30 divided by 2 is 15 i'll add half inch which is 15.5 and i'll mark 15.5 now after marking what it is you have you are going to connect that dot to the rest of the dots we already have follow what you see on the screen right after that we'll move to the knee line we'll move straight to the knee line now there are two ways you can work on this knee line you can either decide to connect whatever it is you have on your hip line straight to the knee and straight to the hem of the trouser but for this trouser i didn't want the knee to be tight or loose too loose rather so what i did was i measured her knee round loosely i measured it loosely and i got 26 i'll divide 26 by 2 that'll give me 13 i'll add half inch that's 13.5 and that's what i mark the that half inch you know is our sewing allowance right please take note of where i'm placing my tape take note of where i'm placing my tape all right now after this we'll move straight to the length area the full length area what i want to use for that length is 15 you can see where i place my tape i didn't go from the beginning of the paper i placed it from the line we already have so 15 is what I use and then I'll connect it straight to my knee line. And that's that about drafting the front piece. So this right here is the front piece. Yes, the front piece. And things you should know about the front piece, the cross should be 2.5 inches or 2 inches. Depends on your size. I use 2.5 because she's a size 12. If it was a size 6 or 8 or probably 10, I'll use just 2 inches for the crotch okay now i'm simply going to cut out if you notice i did not add that on this trouser this is because i'm working on a crepe fabric a stretchy crepe fabric for that matter if you want to add that to your pants simply add extra one inch around that waist region right now i've I'm done cutting out and this is how the front piece looks like just so you know i've used this pattern for years now and it has never left me with any flaw or bulgy effect or yeah it's always leave my trousers so perfect so that's why i've always like i've never thought of even changing any routine i just think of ways to upgrade it yeah and why did i not use that i've explained earlier is because my fabric is good enough even without that okay we use that on fabrics that are too sturdy too rigid like ankara mikado the sturdy mikado not even the silk mikado not even the soft mikado rather those strong ones those yeah you can use that so that the fitting would pop out but hence it is this kind of light fabric trust me you can go well without the darts. So I'm going to cut the front piece out on the main fabric before we move to the back panel. I want to cut this because I'm cutting a lot of trousers with this pattern. So I'll cut all the front pieces and keep aside so that we can now focus on the back panel. So you're going to fold your main fabric into two. I showed earlier that my fabric is folded into two then you place your pattern directly on top secure with pins then you cut out after cutting out make sure you secure the front piece with pin 
So carry with pins so that you don't mix it up with the back piece, okay? So just pin up and then label as front pattern so that you don't make any mistakes. There's a very notable difference between the front piece and the back piece where the crotch line of the front is just 2 inches or 2.5. That of the back is usually like 3 or 3.5 depending on the size of the muse. Another thing is that the center back is one inch or more higher than the center front. Now for the back panel, we're going to go in by 12 inches. I suppose the 11 inches we use for the front, we'll go in by 12 inches for the back panel. Now, we're also going to go in from that 12 inches, we're going to go in by 3.5 inches. I'm using 3.5, of course, because of the size of my muse. If you're a size 10 and below, you're going to use just 3 inches. But because of the size of my muse, I use 3.5, okay? Now, I'm going to trace that 3.5 to the edge of my paper. And then I'll still trace it all the way back to the waistline, just as we did while we were creating the front panel. Now, after that, the next thing to do is to get your hip line. Your hip line, you measure 9 inch from your waist to get your hip line. Then after the hip line, you also go and mark your knee line. Like I showed earlier, you place your tape on your waistline and mark 23 inches. Whatever you have as your own knee line, that's what you mark there. And that's all. We'll go ahead and rule across. And then we'll mark our round measurements. Now, while marking the round measurement for the back, instead of adding half inch for sewing allowance, we are going to add one inch. That's for the back. Now, the waist is 38 divided by 4 is 9.5 plus one inch. That's 10.5 and I mark 10.5. I'll move to my hip line. Hip is 48 divided by 4, 12. 12 plus 1 is 13 and I'll mark 13. Now, I'll connect those lines and move straight to my knee line. So, for the knee line, of course, I'll go to the edge of my paper and I'll go in by 1.5 inches. I'll mark 1.5 inches. I'll connect it to my crotch line just as we did for the front. And then I'll connect it straight to the length of my trouser again. Now, simply apply your knee circumference from that line we just drew. I'll place my tape on that line that we just drew. Yes, that line. I'll place my tape right there and then I'll mark my knee circumference. The knee circumference, like I said earlier, is 26 that I use. Divide by 2, that will give me 13. I'll add 1 inch and that will give me 14. And I'll mark the 14 right there. Now, after that, the circumference I use for the bottom of my trouser is 15 in the front. I'll add 1 inch. That will give me 16. I'll mark 16 at the bottom of my trouser. And then I'll connect it all the way i'll connect all the dots together please don't forget that your crotch line for your back should be at least the very least three inches okay if it's a size 12 14 15 you can now make it 3.5 all right and then the other parts of the trouser should be expanded by one inch if you notice i added one inch throughout my round me measurement please do that don't forget that important piece of information Yes, that's that for palazzo pattern drafting. I'll simply cut out now and then place on my main fabric. After cutting on the main fabric, you're going to have some pieces left. From that pieces, we're going to move straight to cutting the waistband. Now, for the waistband, get the longest part of your fabric, measure 5 inches. When you get that 5 inches, cut it out. Now, the waist I'm working with is 38. That 38, I'll add 2 inches, which is 40. Then I'll go ahead and cut out 40 from this long 5 inches I just cut out. Now, we use 5 inches because we are simply going to fold the band into 2 like this. We're going to fold it into 2. So, after folding into 2, it will be 2 and a half inch. That extra half inch is going to be for seaming allowance. So, basically, our band is 2 inches. So I told you all I'm drafting a lot of trousers and this is just one of those many trousers I'm cutting with this same pattern and I've cut the main fabric and as well I've cut the waistband. Now it's time to move to the sewing machine. Pick up the front piece 